How to tune into the reality you want, full guide. Now, I'm very excited for today's video, so much so that I've even grown my moustache in honor of Nikola Tesla. No, I'm just kidding, but I hope you guys like it. My family's been roasting me for this moustache, saying that I look funny, but I'm, I seem to like it, so yeah, I guess that's all that matters. But anyway, the reason why I'm making this video here today is because I've got a lot of questions which I want to answer. And one of the questions which came to my mind is that when I look around in the world, we're literally in the age of the greatest opportunity and abundance that the world has ever seen. Like even kings like 200 years ago can't experience the same amount of abundance and opportunity as like a normal middle class person in the Western world. But why is it that in this day and age that there are so many unhappy people? Why is it that in the words of Henry Thorier that the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation? But then also when you look around there seems to be this odd group of people which are thriving, this odd group of people that seem to be living out their best life they seem to have such a strong control over their own reality you know for the longest time i used to envy these people i used to always think that they were born lucky or perhaps they had something that i don't and every single time i looked at the great minds of the past or even the present i always created a separation in my mind between us and them that they were somehow blessed or special with something that we don't have but what if they're not actually special what if we actually have within us a special talent or a hidden power that we don't know of. Well, in today's video, that's what we're going to be discussing and that's why we're going to be studying the mind of Nikola Tesla because if we are able to understand the minds of the greats like Nikola Tesla, then, and I promise you, by the end of this video, no matter what current situation that you're in, if you apply the lessons which you learn in this video, then you're going to be able to tune into the reality you want. You're going to be able to be a conscious creator of your life rather than an unconscious passenger. So lesson number one from Nikola Tesla is the power of solitude. So he's got this quote which goes, Originality thrives in seclusion, free of outside influences, beating upon us to cripple the creative mind. Be alone, that is the secret of invention. Be alone, that is when ideas are born. I'm a big believer in solitude and throughout my life the biggest transformational experiences that I've ever had literally occurred when I was in solitude, when I was free of outside influences. And the reason why solitude is so powerful is because there's such a thing as energy transference where you absorb the energies or even the thoughts of the people around you or, or of the collective. So there's that cliche which goes, you are the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with. And there's so much truth to that statement. Like it's literally the people or the thoughts of the collective that you surround yourself with is the thoughts and beliefs which you naturally end up absorbing and adopting yourself. It's sort of like a sponge. You are absorbing all of the energy and thought forms and beliefs of the people around you. People can draw energy from other people. That is a thing. And one of the biggest reasons why the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation is because the way that they're living their life isn't something that comes from within. Now there's this idea that there's two worlds of energy. There's the outer world of energy and there's the inner world of energy. There's an outer world trying to tell you who you are and there's also an inner world trying to tell you who you are. And there's nothing in the external world which can truly tell you who you are. But that's the thing, the external world tells you to be this, do that, listen to your parents, listen to society. But what really matters is what comes within. That's how you control your own reality. Because as the Kabbalion states, as within, so without. You create your reality from the inside. So what are you listening to, the outside world or the inside world? At the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is self-actualization. It is self self-actualization self meaning from within it is you becoming that which you can be and only you can define that there's nothing in the outside world which can define that for you and if you can take control of who you are and who you were destined to be then you can take control over your own reality you can take control over things in the external world because as within so without your external world is just a reflection of your inner work of how you feel internally and that's one of the most important points. That's why I've put the power of solitude first. It all begins with you and how you feel within. Now, secondly, is the power of your imagination. Nikola Tesla says that my method is different. I do not rush into actual work. When I get an idea, I start at once building it up in my imagination. I change the construction, make improvements, and operate the device entirely in my mind. This is actually crazy because this is such a contrast to... Thomas Edison and Thomas Edison was like he experimented with like the light bulb a thousand times that it didn't work and on the thousand and first time apparently it worked like that just sort of represents that his trial and error approach to things but then Nikola, Nikola Tesla on the other hand uses his imagination he uses his imagination to create things in his mind and what can we get from that 
So the first thing which I'm reminded of is a quote from Albert Einstein where he says that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And when I look around, I see a lot of people, even a lot of my friends who complain about their current circumstance, but then they don't do anything to set a new goal to escape that circumstance. And how do you do that? To escape your current circumstance, you need to imagine your way out of it. You need to imagine a different place that you want to be and strive towards that. But then what's most difficult for people to do is to actually close their eyes and to use their imagination to navigate the realm of the unknown, to, to navigate the realm of potential, to navigate to a different potential reality in their imagination and set that as a course, as their North Star, to get out of the current reality that they're in. And that's why Einstein's quote, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. I think the roots of that problem is people's lack of use of their God-given power of imagination. And Nikola Tesla understood the power of imagination, as you see through his quote. Like He was able to create all of his inventions through merely through just using his imagination. So what if we do the same thing in our own lives? What if we're able to, whenever we feel stuck or whenever we want to experience a different reality, if we don't like the current job that we're in, if we don't like the current circumstance that we are currently in, to imagine our way out of it, instead of complaining, instead of complaining and accepting reality as it is, why don't we close our eyes, use our imagination and to navigate the infinite realm of potential, the infinite realm of the unknown to see the way out and then to walk the path because the path illuminates as you walk it you just set the course in your mind of where you want to go and then things will unfold as you take action that is why we've got free will and i think that idea of free will is just so skimmed over like people believe that they've got free will but then they won't do anything to change their current situation and they just complain but we've got the free will to choose a different reality we can see it in our mind first Einstein even said, imagination is everything. It is a preview of life's coming attractions. And I want to say that again. Imagination is everything. It is a preview of life's coming attractions. We all have the power. We've all got this power to choose a different reality. We just need to work it. We just need to use our imagination. And I'll give you some practical steps. And it's going to be very difficult because I've struggled to use my imagination. Even though all the greats, even though all of these books... Like I've been reading like Think and Grow Rich and The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. They all allude to the power of your visualization and imagination and changing your reality. Because, because as the Kabbalion states, as within, so without. You change reality, outer reality, with the use of your mind. Of how you feel internally and what you see in your mind. That has a massive influence in how you experience the 3D world. There's a studies in sports where people who imagine or visualize them participating in the sport actually perform better than those than the people who don't use their imagination at all like there are studies are everywhere the books are everywhere the text the religious text spiritual text they all point to the same thing but that is something which i struggle to implement and and i do want to give you guys one of the biggest tips with regards to your imagination and i know it sounds so simple but but it is consistency and understanding resistance because if you sit down at night or if you sit down like seven nights in a row to try to visualize a different reality than the one that you're currently in right now, then you're going to feel this like whirlwind of resistance and it's going to give you brain fog and it's going to be difficult for you to imagine a different reality, to imagine yourself in a state of abundance, to imagine yourself in a state of receiving love and receiving and receiving all of the things which you want to manifest. And once you feel this resistance, you need to understand where it is coming from. And when, when you feel this resistance, when you're trying to use your imagination, you're going to have to understand the roots of where this resistance comes from. And typically, well, I'll give you guys an insight of what I've found is that what's going to stop you from actually trying to imagine yourself in the state of abundance or in the state of love is your feeling of worthiness and fear of receiving and I know that sounds crazy. You may be thinking, but I want a million dollars and I want that nice house and I want that nice partner. But then when you try to really imagine yourself in the scene when you're actually with them or when you actually have got the things that you want to manifest and there's a blocker there that stops you from feeling those things and it all has its roots in 
basically fear and self-doubt, insecurities and feelings of unworthiness, feeling that you don't deserve abundance. And until you're able to understand the roots and journal and you know do therapy or whatever you need until you can get to that point in your mind where you can imagine yourself there, then you're never going to experience that reality. As Einstein says, insanity is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You need to imagine your way out, to feel and imagine your way out of the current reality that you're in. Okay, now number three is everything is energy, frequency and vibration. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequencies and vibrations. So I actually want to go back to this slide here. So one other thing which I forgot to mention is that when you use the power of your imagination, you have to also imagine the version of yourself that you need to become. Because when you want to shift to a different reality, when you want to manifest a different reality, it's not necessarily about having and acquiring the things that you want to manifest. It's about being and becoming the individual that you need to be to be able to match the frequency of that reality, to be able to manifest those things. So just for example, if you want to win a marathon, then you don't just visualize you getting the medal at the finish line. You visualize the person that you need to become in order to get to that place where you get the medal at the end of the marathon. So you visualize the process of who you need to become. Okay, well, maybe I need to get some running shoes. Maybe I need to find the running program. Maybe then I need to change my diet. And you need to visualize the person that you need to become. It's the same thing with all of your goals. It requires a certain individual and you need to match the frequency of that individual. You need to write everything down. You need to write it to the T of who you need to become in order to manifest that reality because there's a version of you in that reality which is different to the version of you right now it's sort of like a radio station like i think that's the best analogy i can give like the version of you is on a different radio station and you need to try to tune fine tune yourself to become that individual and that's why there's so many self-help books and that's why there's like the book called atomic habits which is like one of the best sellers in the self-help space it's changing your habits because if you change your habits you change the person who you are and you change your reality okay my next point or the next lesson from Nikola Tesla is intuition transcends knowledge so he's got this quote here but instinct is something which transcends knowledge we have undoubtedly certain finer fibers that enables us to perceive truths when logical deduction or any other willful effort of the brain is futile what I liked about Nikola Tesla is he wasn't only just a scientific man, but he also had this spiritual side. And I think that's interesting because I feel like a lot of the minds which I've studied in the past seem to share the same thing. So, so, for example, Steve Jobs and Albert Einstein. So Steve Jobs has this famous quote in his commencement speech, which goes, Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. And I like that last part. Everything else is secondary. He places his intuition above logic and reason. Like, and that's absolutely crazy to hear from somebody who got to their success primarily because of the power of their logical mind. You know, he's in engineering and tech. That is a lot of logic. But then he says, everything else is secondary to your intuition. Everything else is secondary to your heart and intuition have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. And Dantan is also quoted to say that intuition is a sacred gift. And I think there is something here. If all of these great minds point to the power of intuition, then I think that this sort of alludes to the idea that we talk about in this channel, which is your higher self. And it also relates to what I've shown in one of the first slides of, of Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, how at the very top is self-actualization, becoming that who you can be. And I feel like that person, that self-actualized version of you or your higher self, which is out there in the unknown, is beckoning to you in the present moment, calling you onto a particular direction to follow a particular path. And if you follow this, if you follow your heart and your intuition, then that is going to lead you to the reality that you're ultimately destined to experience. And I can give you a big warning of what happens if you don't follow your intuition. So Nikola Tesla says, most persons are so absorbed in the contemplation of the outside world that they are wholly oblivious to what is passing on within themselves. So for the longest time, I was only doing things to impress society and my parents. 
to live up to their expectations. So I went to university to do engineering and then I worked as an engineer. So I did, I was in this loop for basically a decade of my life and I was unfulfilled. And this is a quote from Mary Curie, the problem of conform, the problem with conformity is that everybody likes you by yourself. So what if you get to the reality that you think that you want, but then you come to realize that it's a reality that the external world dictated for you because you were so absorbed in the contemplation of the outside world that you were wholly oblivious to what's passing on within yourself. And that was a tough pill to swallow. Imagine spending a decade of your life <laughs> in a pursuit that wasn't coming from within. It was a really humbling experience to actually come to that conclusion and I feel like that's a blocker which a lot of people come across because that's a blocker which I came across like to come to the conclusion that I just wasted my time doing something that I didn't like just because I wanted to impress people in the outside world like that is a hard realization and truth to follow and for the longest time I wasn't accepting that truth because I didn't want it to be the truth I didn't want to accept and that I was blind and that I was operating through the world as an unconscious person. And I think that's something which a lot of people will need to come to terms with. And I believe that's why people have things like quarter life crises or heart or midlife crises. And it's because they didn't figure out the true contents of their soul of their heart and intuition. And this is a quote from Carl Jung, if I remember correctly, it goes something along the lines of, the first part of life is dedicated to forming a healthy ego, and the second part of life is learning how to let go of it. Well, something along the lines of that, like, like, like we form a healthy ego just so we can operate in society, but we need to learn how to let it go and to follow our heart and intuition of who we truly want to become. And all of these things just point to you living the reality that you truly want. Now, the fifth lesson from Nikola Tesla is the adventure. So if you decide to follow your heart and intuition, there's a big chance that it is going to be the road less traveled. You may find that your path is so unconventional that people will criticize you and think that you're a weirdo for giving up your previous life to chase your new life, which there is no guarantee of whether it'll be successful. But deep down, you know that your heart and intuition is calling you upon this particular path. All that was great in the past was ridiculed, condemned, combated and suppressed, only to emerge all the more powerfully, all the more triumphantly from the struggle. Now what I believe is sort of like the archetype of Christ or the archetype of truth, how truth is persecuted before it is accepted and I feel like the mythology of the hero's journey resonates with that idea how the hero needs to go and fight the dragon, how there's a metaphorical death and rebirth before the hero returns triumphantly, having overcome all the struggles of his journey. And it's the same thing with you. Whenever you want to go off and follow your heart and intuition and do something new to really tune into the reality that you want, which is different from the one that you are in right now, then you're going to feel the resistance of the outside world trying to push you back into the reality that you're currently in. That is also why it is so difficult for people to change because they feel the resistance, like they can start to try to take steps towards the reality that they want, but they start to feel resistance both internally and externally. And you're going to have to face a dragon, it is inevitable. All that was great in the past was ridiculed, condemned, combated, suppressed, only to emerge all the more powerfully, all the more triumphantly from the struggle. So you're going to have to go through that process of the hero's journey. If you are to be a master of your reality, and if you don't want to face the dragon, if you don't want to go on the hero's journey, then you're going to have to stay where you are. And that is where the massive men lead lives of quiet desperation. Also, I think this one was pretty cool. A new idea must not be judged by its immediate results. So it's a process, man. Like the journey is a process and you just have to be patient and understand that when you're taking steps towards where you want to go, then things are happening in the background. The universe is conspiring to help you. You just need to hold on to that aspect of belief. Now, number six is your own inner mentor. Nikola Tesla says, My brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. And I think this delves deep down into this esoteric idea of like 
the infinite mind and the mind of God. It's even alluded to one of the most famous self-help books, Think and Grow Rich, of how they call it infinite intelligence and how you may have heard in like the spiritual space, the Akashic records of what, so what Nikola Tesla is saying is that there is something out there, infinite intelligence, God, universe, infinite mind, which you can connect to, to draw wisdom and inspiration and ideas from. And that's why I believe that's all of where his inventions came from. That's where all things come from. That's where all thoughts come from. That's where all innovation comes from. Where do these thoughts come from? They must come from somewhere, right? And what I believe is that you can tune into infinite intelligence. So when, if you are stuck, if you are stuck on a problem right now, if you don't know how to do this or you don't know how to do that, then perhaps you need to tune into the universe. Ask and you will, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And that's a quote from the Bible. Nikola Tesla also says that the gift of mental power comes from God, divine being, and if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we become in tune with this great power. My mother had taught me to seek all truth in the Bible. And this is something which I've applied in my life. So there was this stage in my life where I was doing a real estate deal. Doing this real estate deal was one of the biggest transactions and financial decisions that I was ever making in my life. And I was doing, and I was doing it sight unseen. The place where I wanted to buy was 4,000 kilometers away from where I live on the other side of Australia and I didn't want to travel and I believed that there was this way that I can do it by using my imagination and using the power of my mind to give this answers and solutions to me. How you can apply this is that you go into a dark room and then you meditate for like 10, 20 minutes to calm the mind and then after that you can ask questions to the divine or God or the universe of what you want answers to you can ask questions in this state once you've quieted your mind and what i found is that when i did this practice then the answers did come to me i just had a pen and a paper ready to start writing down what i was receiving from the universe or the universal mind god universe whatever you want to call it and i would walk out of that room with the answers which i needed and all of the actions which i needed to take to move forward in going ahead with this real estate purchase and it's the same for you every time you're stuck in something you can just slow down slow down and remove all of the noise in the world because that's that because there's that idea of like how is god going to talk to you or how are you going to hear the voice of god if you constantly have your mind occupied and it's the exact same thing here if you quiet your mind and you enter a place of just pure intention in quiet and solitude, then I 100% guarantee that the ads will come to you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I want to tell you guys about my free higher self worksheet. So essentially this is a worksheet which helps you tune into the reality you want. It asks you the proper journaling questions and journaling prompts. So if you want to go into a dark room and meditate and then come out of it with more clarity and direction on how to move forward in your life and how to actually tune into the reality you want, then this worksheet is perfect for you because it will go over all of the things that you need of where you want to go and who you need to become and the habits that you need to form and the dragons which you need to face in order to get to the reality you want. And also for those of you who want more, I've also got this Higher Self one-to-one -one coaching program. And essentially this is a 12-week program where I help my clients reach their higher self and to tune into the reality that they want. And the reason I made this program is because I understand how difficult it can be to walk the higher self path alone. I was literally doing what Einstein was saying of the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And for years I was stuck in this trap because I didn't have the support and accountability to help me and guide me towards my journey. If you're interested in this program, you can book a call with me to find out more. Link down in the description below to book a discovery call. And essentially how this call is going to go is that it's all about you. This is where we discuss your journey, what you want from life, the things that's been holding you back. So we can really deep dive into try to understand the obstacles which has been stopping you from getting to where you want to go. So after the call, you're going to be walking away with more clarity and direction on how to move forward. And also after the call, we can discuss whether you're a good fit for the program and discuss potential options of working together and yeah link down in the description below to book your discovery call and as always thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next one peace